Coney Island's most iconic ride, the Cyclone, has been standing tall for almost a century. With each climb, twist and turn, riders must hold on for their dear life praying that they make it out alive. But not everyone does. This ride has not only brought joy and excitement, but also tragedy and death. Despite being examined and having found no issues, this ride has claimed the lives of three people. And while the park has lost millions in settlements, the coaster still stands tall. Why is that? Join us as we explore the hidden truth behind this death trap. Coney Island was the largest amusement area in the United States from 1880 to World War II, attracting several million visitors per year. At its height, it contained three amusement parks and many independent amusements. Witnessing the huge popularity and with a $100,000 investment, the owners hired leading coaster designer Vernon Keenan to design a new ride, the Cyclone. This wooden roller coaster is a true masterpiece of engineering that has now been standing tall for almost a century. For many thrill seekers, this was the perfect place to test their nerves and satisfy their thirst for adventure. As you approach Luna Park in Coney Island, you can't miss the distinctive appearance of the cyclone. The wooden track, painted brown, is surrounded by redwood fencing and a white steel framework. The letters cyclone shine in bright red, warning you of the thrill that awaits you. Once you hop on on one of the three trains, your heart will start racing as you head north and then turn right at an almost impossible angle. The train quickly climbs the 85-foot lift hill and you can feel the wind rushing past as you reach the top. But the worst is yet to come. As you first descend the first 58.1 degree drop, you can barely catch your breath before the train takes you on a wild ride through six fan turns and 12 drops. You'll scream and laugh as you feel weightless for what seems like an eternity. But don't let your guard down. The head chopper effect will make you feel like you're about to crash into the track above you. The ride lasts for 1 minute and 50 seconds, but it feels like a lifetime. The bench seating and lap bar restraint system make you feel like you're flying through the air, and the absence of headrests adds an extra layer of danger. And when you finally emerge from the tunnel and the train comes to a stop, you'll be gasping for air and grinning from ear to ear. But this ride isn't just a thrill seeker's dream, it's a death trap. They say the fingerprints of the unlucky souls who lost their lives on the cyclone still cling to the cars like a grim reminder of what can happen when you're not careful. It was a beautiful day in May 1985, and people were flocking to the cyclone, ready to experience the thrill of a lifetime. One guy, who was just 29 years old, decided to take it up a notch and stood up on the ride. Maybe he wanted to show off to his friends, or maybe he was just feeling bold. But whatever the reason, it was a decision he quickly regretted. As the ride hurtled through the twists and turns, the man lost his balance and his head smacked into the crossbeam. The impact was so severe that he died instantly. It was a tragic incident and the first death on the cyclone, but unfortunately, it wouldn't be the last. Tragedy struck again in the summer of 1988. There was a guy named Peter Ellis who worked at the park as an engineer. Little did he know that the cyclone wasn't just a death trap for riders, but it was lethal for park employees too. It was a hot August day and Peter decided to take a cheeky joyride during his lunch break. He sneaked into the back of the car and was having the time of his life, enjoying the wind in his hair and the adrenaline pumping through his veins. But suddenly, the ride took a turn for the worse. Peter lost his grip and fell out of the car, hurtling towards the ground like a ragdoll. His body crashed onto the tracks below with a sickening thud and he died instantly. It was a gruesome end to a young life and it was clear that the cyclone was not to be taken lightly. An investigation was launched after the incident, which found that Peter was to blame after witnesses reportedly stated that he was standing up on the ride. Investigators stated that the roller coaster went up the first hill, and while coming down, witnesses reported he was standing up. There were restraints to lock the riders in, and the investigation went on to say, apparently you can slip out if you're sitting alone. The ride was examined, but there were no issues found, so the case was closed. The ride was then reopened later that month, and then the third fatality came on the 31st of July 2007, 30 years after the death of Peter Ellis. A musician from Redwood City, California named Keith Shirasua 
traveled to New York with his girlfriend Linda Walker in July 2007 to celebrate his 53rd birthday. The couple decided they would go for a day trip to Coney Island, thinking it would be fun. They weren't ready. At 10.20 in the morning, Keith decided to ride the cyclone. However, his wife decided to sit the ride out and cheer for him from below. As the coaster climbed up, Keith felt the adrenaline pumping through his veins. But as it reached the top and plummeted down the first 85-foot drop, something went terribly wrong. His head snapped forward and he let out a cry of pain. He tried to hold on, but the coaster was too much for him. When he finally emerged from the ride, he was holding his neck and he had lost the feeling in his fingers. It was clear that something serious had happened. The operators didn't seem to care much about what had just happened, and a report of the incident was never filed. Keith's girlfriend urged the food stall worker to call 911 as he began to lose sensation in his legs. The ambulance rushed him to Coney Island Hospital, where doctors discovered that he had fractured three vertebrae in his neck. Emergency neurosurgery was necessary, and Keith underwent the operation on August 2nd. For a brief moment, things seemed to be looking up. Keith was walking around after the surgery, but the next day, he was dead. Yes, you heard that right. It was later determined that complications during the surgery resulted in his death. The ride operators seemed indifferent to the tragedy, and when Keith's family lawyer reached out to them, they denied any knowledge of the incident. The death of Keith Shirasawa on the cyclone ride at Coney Island sent shockwaves through the amusement park community. The incident was chilling, and rumors swirled around the park as to what really happened on that fateful day. While the ride had reopened after the death of two other riders, it seemed as though no lessons had been learned. Keith's family was devastated by their loss, and their grief turned to anger when it emerged that the ride had been poorly maintained. The family fought non-stop for justice, suing the city of New York for failing to keep the cyclones safe for riders. They argued that the ride had malfunctioned, causing Keith to snap forward and ultimately leading to his untimely death. The city tried to defend itself, claiming that Keith should have known the risks of riding a roller coaster, but the family was determined to prove that the cyclone was to blame for Keith's death. They argued that the ride had been neglected and poorly maintained, making it unsafe for riders. After a long and difficult legal battle, the family finally won their case. They proved that the cyclone had indeed malfunctioned and caused Keith's death. In the end, a settlement of $250,000 was reached, and the family could finally begin to move on from their loss. But the dark cloud of the cyclone still loomed over Coney Island. The ride had claimed the lives of three riders, and questions still remained about its safety. And that's not all of it. In 2008, a woman who had ridden the ride claimed that she suffered serious injuries as a result. After seven long years of legal battles, she was awarded a whopping one and a half million in damages, despite being found partially at fault. And in March 2018, a man waiting in line for the ride claimed that he was struck by a metal bolt. The ride has had several mechanical failures over the years, leading to frequent evacuations. In 2015, a mechanical issue left the train stuck at the top of the lift hill, causing widespread panic among the riders. Thankfully, no one was injured. But just a few months later, the ride stopped completely due to another mechanical issue. And in 2018, the cyclone lost power mid-ride, leading to yet another evacuation. Since its third fatality in 2007, the ride has undergone extensive refurbishment and upgrades after it was sold to Luna Park, but its notorious reputation still looms at large. When asked if they would ever consider shutting the ride down, Luna Park's response was crystal clear. No way. Are you willing to ride this death trap? Let us know in the comments below. Do you want to hear more roller coaster tragedies? Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. That's it for you. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next one.